The revolutions of 1848, known in some countries as the Spring of Nations, People's Spring, Springtime of the Peoples, or the Year of Revolution, were a series of political upheavals throughout Europe in 1848. It remains the most widespread revolutionary wave in European history. The revolutions were essentially democratic and liberal in nature, with the aim of removing the old monarchical structures and creating independent nation-states. The revolutions spread across Europe after an initial revolution began in France in February. Over 50 countries were affected, but with no significant coordination or cooperation among their respective revolutionaries. Some of the major contributing factors were widespread dissatisfaction with political leadership, demands for more participation in government and democracy, demands for freedom of the press, other demands made by the working class, the upsurge of nationalism, and the regrouping of established government forces. The uprisings were led by ad hoc coalitions of reformers, the middle classes and workers, which did not hold together for long. Tens of thousands of people were killed, and many more were forced into exile. Significant lasting reforms included the abolition of serfdom in Austria and Hungary, the end of absolute monarchy in Denmark, and the introduction of representative democracy in the Netherlands. The revolutions were most important in France, the Netherlands, the states of the German Confederation that would make up the German Empire in the late 19th and early 20th century, Italy, and the Austrian Empire. Origins the revolutions arose from such a wide variety of causes that it is difficult to view them as resulting from a coherent movement or set of social phenomena. Numerous changes had been taking place in European society throughout the first half of the 19th century. Both liberal reformers and radical politicians were reshaping national governments. Technological change was revolutionizing the life of the working classes. A popular press extended political awareness, and new values and ideas such as popular liberalism, nationalism and socialism began to emerge. Some historians emphasize the serious crop failures, particularly those of 1846, that produced hardship among peasants and the working urban poor. Large swaths of the nobility were discontented with royal absolutism or near-absolutism. In 1846, there had been an uprising of Polish nobility in Austrian Galicia, which was only countered when peasants, in turn, rose up against the nobles. Additionally, an uprising by democratic forces against Prussia, planned but not actually carried out, occurred in Greater Poland. Next, the middle classes began to agitate. Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels, working in Brussels, had written Manifesto of the Communist Party, published in German in London on February 21, 1848, at the request of the Communist League, an organization consisting principally of German workers. Following the March insurrection in Berlin, they began agitating in Germany. They issued their demands of the Communist Party in Germany. From Paris in March, the pamphlet urged unification of Germany, universal suffrage, abolition of feudal duties, and similar middle-class goals. The middle and working classes thus shared a desire for reform, and agreed on many of the specific aims. Their participations in the revolutions, however, differed. While much of the impetus came from the middle classes, much of the cannon fodder came from the lower classes. The revolts first erupted in the cities. Urban workers The population in French rural areas had risen rapidly, causing many peasants to seek a living in the cities. Many in the bourgeoisie feared and distanced themselves from the working poor. Many unskilled laborers toiled from 12 to 15 hours per day when they had work, living in squalid, disease-ridden slums. Traditional artisans felt the pressure of industrialization, having lost their guilds. Revolutionaries such as Karl Marx built up a following, the liberalization of trade laws and the growth of factories had increased the gulf among master tradesmen, and journeymen and apprentices, whose numbers increased disproportionately by 93% from 1815 to 1848 in Germany. Significant proletarian unrest had occurred in Lyon in 1831 and 1834, and Prague in 1844. Jonathan Sperber has suggested that in the period after 1825, poor urban workers, particularly day laborers, factory workers, and artisans, saw their purchasing power decline relatively steeply. Urban meat consumption in Belgium, France, and Germany stagnated or declined after 1830, despite growing populations. 
The economic crisis of 1847 increased urban unemployment, 10,000 Viennese factory workers were made redundant and 128 Hamburg firms went bankrupt over the course of 1847. With the exception of the Netherlands, there was a strong correlation among the countries that were most deeply affected by the industrial shock of 1847 and those that underwent a revolution in 1848. The situation in the German states was similar. Parts of Prussia were beginning to industrialize. During the decade of the 1840s, mechanized production in the textile industry brought about inexpensive clothing that undercut the handmade products of German tailors. Reforms ameliorated the most unpopular features of rural feudalism, but industrial workers remained dissatisfied with these and pressed for greater change. Urban workers had no choice but to spend half of their income on food, which consisted mostly of bread and potatoes. As a result of harvest failures, food prices soared and the demand for manufactured goods decreased, causing an increase in unemployment. During the revolution, to address the problem of unemployment, workshops were organized for men interested in construction work. Officials also set up workshops for women when they felt they were excluded. Artisans and unemployed workers destroyed industrial machines when they threatened to give employers more power over them. Rural areas Rural population growth had led to food shortages, land pressure, and migration, both within and from Europe, especially to the Americas. Peasant discontent in the 1840s grew in intensity, peasant occupations of lost communal land increased in many areas, those convicted of wood theft in the Rhenish Palatinate increased from 100,000 in 1829-30 to 185,000 in 1846-47. In the years 1845 and 1846, a potato blight caused a subsistence crisis in northern Europe, and encouraged the raiding of manorial potato stocks in Silesia in 1847. The effects of the blight were most severely manifested in the Great Irish Famine, but also caused famine-like conditions in the Scottish Highlands and throughout continental Europe. Harvests of rye in the Rhineland were 20% of previous levels, while the Czech potato harvest was reduced by a half. These reduced harvests were accompanied by a steep rise in prices, the cost of wheat more than doubled in France and Habsburg Italy. There were 400 French food riots during 1846 to 1847, while German socio-economic protests increased from 28 during 1830 to 39, to 103 during 1840 to 1847. Central to long-term peasant grievances were the loss of communal lands, forest restrictions such as the French Forest Code of 1827, and remaining feudal structures, notably the robot labor obligations that existed among the serfs and oppressed peasantry of the Habsburg lands, aristocratic wealth and corresponding power was synonymous with the ownership of farm lands and effective control over the peasants. Peasant grievances exploded during the revolutionary year of 1848, yet were often disconnected from urban revolutionary movements. The revolutionary Sandor Petofi's popular nationalist rhetoric in Budapest did not translate into any success with the Magyar peasantry, while the Viennese Democrat Hans Kudlik reported that his efforts to galvanize the Austrian peasantry had disappeared in the Great Sea of Indifference and Phlegm. Role of ideas Despite forceful and often violent efforts of established and reactionary powers to keep them down, disruptive ideas gained popularity, democracy, liberalism, nationalism, and socialism. They demanded a constitution, press freedom, freedom of expression and other democratic rights, the establishment of civilian militia, liberation of peasants, liberalization of the economy, abolition of tariff barriers and the abolition of monarchical power structures in favor of the establishment of republican states, or at least the restriction of the prince power in the form of constitutional monarchies. In the language of the 1840s, democracy meant universal male suffrage. Liberalism fundamentally meant consent of the governed and the restriction of church and state power, republican government, freedom of the press and the individual. The 1840s had seen the emergence of a number of radical liberal publications such as the Rheinische Zeitung 1842, Le National and Le Reform 1843 in France, Ignaz Caranda S. Grenzboden 1841 in Austria, Lajos Kossuth. S. Pesti Herlap, 1841, in Hungary, as well as the increased popularity of the older Morgenbladet in Norway and the Aftenbladet in Sweden. Nationalism 
believed in uniting people bound by some mix of common languages, culture, religion, shared history, and of course immediate geography, there were also irredentist movements. Nationalism had developed a broader appeal during the pre-1848 period, as seen in the Frantisek Palaki. 1836 History of the Czech Nation, which emphasized a national lineage of conflict with the Germans, or the popular patriotic Leiterskranz song circles that were held across Germany, patriotic and belligerent songs about Schleswig had dominated the Würzburg National Song Festival in 1845. Socialism in the 1840s was a term without a consensus definition, meaning different things to different people, but was typically used within a context of more power for workers in a system based on worker ownership of the means of production. Events by country or region Italian states Although little noticed at the time, the first major outbreak came in Sicily, starting in January 1848. There had been several previous revolts against Bourbon rule, this one produced an independent state that lasted only 16 months before the Bourbons came back. During those months, the constitution was quite advanced for its time in liberal democratic terms, as was the proposal of an Italian confederation of states. The revolt's failure was reversed a dozen years later as the Bourbon Kingdom of the Two Sicilies collapsed in 1860-61 with the Risorgimento. France The February Revolution in France was sparked by the suppression of the Campaign des Banquets. This revolution was driven by nationalist and republican ideals among the French general public, who believed the people should rule themselves. It ended the constitutional monarchy of Louis Philippe, and led to the creation of the French Second Republic. This government was headed by Louis Napoleon, who, after only four years, established the Second French Empire in 1852. Alexis de Tocqueville remarked in his recollections of the period, Society was cut in two, those who had nothing united in common envy, and those who had anything united in common terror. German states The March Revolution in the German states took place in the south and the west of Germany, with large popular assemblies and mass demonstrations. Led by well-educated students and intellectuals, they demanded German national unity, freedom of the press, and freedom of assembly. The uprisings were not well coordinated, but had in common a rejection of traditional, autocratic political structures in the 39 independent states of the German Confederation. The middle class and working class components of the revolution split, and in the end, the conservative aristocracy defeated it, forcing many liberals into exile. Denmark Denmark had been governed by a system of absolute monarchy since the 17th century. King Christian VIII, a moderate reformer but still an absolutist, died in January 1848 during a period of rising opposition from farmers and liberals. The demands for constitutional monarchy, led by the national liberals, ended with a popular march to Christianborg on March 21. The new king, Frederick VII, met the liberals. Demands and installed a new cabinet that included prominent leaders of the National Liberal Party. The National Liberal Movement wanted to abolish absolutism, but retain a strongly centralized state. The king accepted a new constitution agreeing to share power with a bicameral parliament called the Rigsdag. It is said that the Danish king's first words after signing away his absolute power were, That was nice, now I can sleep in the mornings. Although army officers were dissatisfied, they accepted the new arrangement which, in contrast to the rest of Europe, was not overturned by reactionaries. The liberal constitution did not extend to Schleswig, leaving the Schleswig-Holstein question unanswered. Schleswig Schleswig, a region containing both Danes a North Germanic population and Germans a West Germanic population, was a part of the Danish monarchy, but remained a duchy separate from the Kingdom of Denmark. Spurred by pan-German sentiment, the Germans of Schleswig took up arms to protest a new policy announced by Denmark's national liberal government, which would have fully integrated the duchy into Denmark. The German population in Schleswig and Holstein revolted, inspired by the Protestant clergy. 
The German states sent in an army, but Danish victories in 1849 led to the Treaty of Berlin 1850, and the London Protocol 1852. They reaffirmed the sovereignty of the King of Denmark, while prohibiting union with Denmark. The violation of the latter provision led to renewed warfare in 1863 and the Prussian victory in 1864. Habsburg Empire From March 1848 through July 1849, the Habsburg Austrian Empire was threatened by revolutionary movements, which often had a nationalist character. The empire, ruled from Vienna, included Austrians, Hungarians, Slovenes, Poles, Czechs, Croats, Slovaks, Ukrainians, Ruthenians, Romanians, Serbs and Italians, all of whom attempted in the course of the revolution to achieve either autonomy, independence, or even hegemony over other nationalities. The nationalist picture was further complicated by the simultaneous events in the German states, which moved toward greater German national unity. Hungary. The Hungarian Revolution of 1848 was the longest in Europe, crushed in August 1849 by Austrian and Russian armies. Nevertheless, it had a major impact in freeing the serfs. It started on 15 March 1848, when Hungarian patriots organized mass demonstrations in Pest and Buda, today Budapest, which forced the imperial governor to accept their 12 points of demands, which included the demand for freedom of press, an independent Hungarian ministry residing in Budapest and responsible to a popularly elected parliament, the formation of a national guard, complete civil and religious equality, trial by jury, a national bank, a Hungarian army, the withdrawal of foreign troops from Hungary. Hungary, Austrian troops, the freeing of political prisoners, and the union with Transylvania. On that morning, the demands were read aloud along with poetry by Sandor Petofi with the simple lines of, We swear by the God of the Hungarians. We swear, we shall be slaves no more. Lajos Kossuth and some other liberal nobility that made up the Diet appealed to the Habsburg court with demands for representative government and civil liberties. These events resulted in Clemens von Metternich, the Austrian prince and foreign minister, resigning. The demands of the Diet were agreed upon on March 18 by Emperor Ferdinand. Even though Hungary would remain part of the empire through personal union with the emperor, a constitutional government would be founded. The Diet then passed the April laws that established equality before the law, a legislature, a hereditary constitutional monarchy, and an end to the transfer and restrictions of land use. The revolution grew into a war for independence from the Austrian Empire when Josef Jelisic, Ban of Croatia, crossed the border to restore Habsburg control. The new government, led by Lajos Kossuth, was initially successful against the Habsburg forces. Although Hungary took a national united stand for its freedom, some minorities of the Kingdom of Hungary, including the Serbs of Vojvodina, the Romanians of Transylvania and some Slovaks of Upper Hungary supported the Habsburg Emperor and fought against the Hungarian Revolutionary Army. Eventually, after one and a half years of fighting, the revolution was crushed when Russian Tsar Nicholas I marched into Hungary with over 300,000 troops. Hungary was thus placed under brutal martial law, with the Austrian government restored. The leading rebels like Kossuth fled into exile or were executed. In the long run, the passive resistance following the revolution led to the Austro-Hungarian Compromise, 1867, which marked the birth of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Galicia The center of the Ukrainian national movement was in Galicia, which is today divided between Ukraine and Poland. On April 19, 1848, a group of representatives led by the Greek Catholic clergy launched a petition to the Austrian Emperor. It expressed wishes that in those regions of Galicia where the Ruthenian Ukrainian population represented majority, the Ukrainian language should be taught at schools and used to announce official decrees for the peasantry. Local officials were expected to understand it and the Ruthenian clergy was to be equalized in their rights with the clergy of all other denominations. On May 2, 1848, the Supreme Ruthenian Ukrainian Council was established. The Council 1848 was headed by the Greek Catholic Bishop Gregory Yakhimovich and consisted of 30 permanent members. Its main goal was the administrative division of Galicia into Western Polish and Eastern Ruthenian, Ukrainian parts within the borders of the Habsburg Empire, and formation of a separate region with a political self-governance. Sweden 
During 18 to 19 March, a series of riots known as the March Unrest took place in the Swedish capital of Stockholm. Declarations with demands of political reform were spread in the city and a crowd were dispersed by the military, leading to 18 casualties. Switzerland Switzerland, already an alliance of republics, also saw an internal struggle. The attempted secession of seven Swiss cantons to form an alliance known as the Sonderbund separate alliance, in 1845 led to a short civil conflict in November 1847 in which around 100 people were killed. The Sonderbund was decisively defeated, and a new constitution of 1848 ended the almost complete independence of the cantons, transforming Switzerland into a federal state. Greater Poland Polish people mounted a military insurrection against the Prussians in the Grand Duchy of Posen, or the Greater Poland region, a part of Prussia since its annexation in 1815. Danubian principalities A Romanian liberal and romantic nationalist uprising began in June in the Principality of Wallachia. Closely connected with the 1848 unsuccessful revolt in Moldavia, it sought to overturn the administration imposed by Imperial Russian authorities under the Regulamental Organic Regime, and, through many of its leaders, demanded the abolition of Boyar privilege. Led by a group of young intellectuals and officers in the Wallachian military forces, the movement succeeded in toppling the ruling Prince Gheorghe Bibescu, whom it replaced with a provisional government and a regency, and in passing a series of major liberal reforms, first announced in the Proclamation of Islas. Belgium Belgium did not see major unrest in 1848, although numerous small-scale confrontations did occur. A number of local riots broke out, concentrated in the Silin industrial industrial region of the provinces of Liege and Hainaut. The most serious threat of revolutionary contagion was posed by Belgian émigré groups from France. Shortly after the revolution in France, Belgian migrant workers living in Paris were encouraged to return to Belgium to overthrow the monarchy and establish a republic. Karl Marx was himself expelled from Brussels in early March on accusations of having used part of his inheritance to arm Belgian revolutionaries. Around 6,000 armed émigrés of the Belgian Legion attempted to cross the Belgian frontier. There were two divisions which were formed. The first group, traveling by train, were stopped and quickly disarmed at Kievrain on 26 March 1848. The second group crossed the border on 29 March and headed for Brussels. They were confronted by Belgian troops at the hamlet of Resquan's Tout and defeated. Several smaller groups managed to infiltrate Belgium, but the reinforced Belgian border troops were successful and the defeat at Resquan's Tout effectively ended the revolutionary threat to Belgium. The situation in Belgium began to recover that summer after a good harvest, and fresh elections returned a strong majority to the governing party. Ireland Occurring during the Great Famine, in late 1847 the Crime and Outrage Bill was passed by the British Parliament regarding crime in Ireland, which was then part of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. The bill was designed with the expressed intent to create a counterinsurgency for the growing Irish nationalist agitation that was causing the British government concern about a possible violent rebellion against British rule in Ireland. In 1848, the Young Irelander Rebellion would be a failed Irish nationalist uprising led by the Young Ireland Movement, part of the wider revolutions of 1848 that affected most of Europe. It took place on the 29th of July 1848 in the village of Ballingarry, South Tipperary. The Young Irelanders and their supporters, chased an armed Royal Irish Constabulary unit of nearly 50 men who would retreat and then garrison themselves in a house, holding those inside as hostages. A several-hour gunfight followed, but the rebels fled after a large group of constabulary reinforcements arrived. It is sometimes called the Famine Rebellion, since it took place during the Great Famine in Ireland, or the Battle of Ballingarry. As with the earlier United Irishmen. S. Mass Rebellion in 1798, who sought to emulate the American Revolution, and Robert Emmett's rising in 1803. The Young Irelanders were inspired by republicanism in the United States and, to a lesser extent, Europe. 
Other European states Great Britain, Belgium, Netherlands, Portugal, Spain, the Russian Empire, including Poland and Finland, and the Ottoman Empire did not encounter major national revolutions over this period. Sweden and Norway were also little affected. Serbia, though formally unaffected by the revolt as it was a part of the Ottoman state, actively supported Serbian revolutionaries in the Habsburg Empire, Russia. S. relative stability was attributed to the revolutionary groups. Inability to communicate with each other. In the Kingdom of Poland and the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, uprisings took place in 1830-31, the November Uprising, and 1846, the Krakow Uprising, notable for being quelled by the anti-revolutionary Galician slaughter. A final revolt took place in 1863-65, the January Uprising, but none occurred in 1848. Switzerland and Portugal were also unaffected in 1848, though both had gone through civil wars in the preceding years, the Sonderbund War in Switzerland and the Liberal Wars in Portugal. The introduction of the Swiss Federal Constitution in 1848 was a revolution of sorts, laying the foundation of Swiss society as it is today. In the Netherlands, no major unrests appeared because the king, William II, decided to alter the Dutch constitution to reform elections and effectively reduce the power of the monarchy. While no major political upheavals occurred in the Ottoman Empire as such, political unrest did occur in some of its vassal states. In Serbia, feudalism was abolished and the power of the Serbian prince was reduced with the Turkish constitution of Serbia in 1838. Other English-speaking countries In Britain, the middle classes had been pacified by general enfranchisement in the Reform Act 1832, the consequent agitations, violence, and petitions of the Chartist movement came to a head with their peaceful petition to Parliament of 1848. The repeal in 1846 of the protectionist agricultural tariffs, called the Corn Laws, had diffused some proletarian fervor. In the Isle of Man, there were ongoing efforts to reform the self elected House of Keys, but no revolution took place. Some of the reformers were encouraged by events in France in particular. In the United States, the main impact of the revolutions and their failure was substantially increased immigration, especially from Germany. This, in turn, fueled the nativist, know nothing movement in the years preceding the American Civil War. The know nothings were opposed to Catholic immigration, especially immigration of German and Irish Catholics, and held Pope Pius IX responsible for the 1848 revolution's failure. 1848 in Canada saw the establishment of responsible government in Nova Scotia and the Canadas, the first such governments in the British Empire outside of Great Britain itself. John Ralston Saul has argued that this development is tied to the revolutions in Europe, but described the Canadian approach to the revolutionary year of 1848 as talking their way out of the empire's control system and into a new democratic model. A stable democratic system which has lasted to the present day. Tory and Orange Order in Canada opposition to responsible government came to a head in riots triggered by the Rebellion Losses Bill in 1849. They succeeded in the burning of the Parliament buildings in Montreal, but, unlike their counter-revolutionary counterparts in Europe, they were ultimately unsuccessful. South America in Spanish Latin America, the Revolution of 1848 appeared in New Granada, where Colombian students, liberals, and intellectuals demanded the election of General José Hilario López. He took power in 1849 and launched major reforms, abolishing slavery and the death penalty, and providing freedom of the press and of religion. The resulting turmoil in Colombia lasted four decades, from 1851 to 1885. The country was ravaged by four general civil wars and 50 local revolutions. In Chile, the 1848 revolutions inspired the 1851 Chilean Revolution. In Brazil, the Praera Revolt, a movement in Pernambuco, lasted from November 1848 to 1852. Unresolved conflicts left over from the period of the Regency and local resistance to the consolidation of the Brazilian Empire that had been proclaimed in 1822 helped to plant the seeds of the revolution. Legacy We have been beaten and humiliated. 
scattered, imprisoned, disarmed and gagged. The fate of European democracy has slipped from our hands. Democrats looked to 1848 as a democratic revolution, which in the long run ensured liberty, equality, and fraternity. For nationalists, 1848 was the springtime of hope, when newly emerging nationalities rejected the old multinational empires. But the end results were not as comprehensive as many had hoped. Many governments engaged in a partial reversal of the revolutionary reforms of 1848 to 1849, as well as heightened repression and censorship. The Hanoverian nobility successfully appealed to the Confederal Diet in 1851 over the loss of their noble privileges, while the Prussian Junkers recovered their manorial police powers from 1852 to 1855. In the Austrian Empire, the Sylvester Patents 1851 discarded Franz Stadion. S. Constitution and the Statute of Basic Rights, while the number of arrests in Habsburg territories increased from 70,000 in 1850 to 1 million by 1854. Nicholas I's rule in Russia after 1848 was particularly repressive, marked by an expansion of the secret police the Treti Adelania, and stricter censorship. There were more Russians working for censorship organs than actual books published in the period immediately after 1848. In France, the works of Ledru Roland, Hugo, Baudelaire and Proudhon were confiscated. In the post-revolutionary decade after 1848, little had visibly changed, and many historians considered the revolutions a failure, given the seeming lack of permanent structural changes. More recently, Christopher Clark has characterized the period that followed 1848 as one dominated by a revolution in government. Karl Marx expressed disappointment at the bourgeois character of the revolutions. The Prussian Prime Minister Otto von Manteuffel declared that the state could no longer be run, like the landed estate of a nobleman. In Prussia, August von Bethmann Holweg's Proisches Waschenblatt newspaper, founded 1851, acted as a popular outlet for modernizing Prussian conservative statesmen and journalists against the reactionary Cruzidine faction. The revolutions of 1848 were followed by new centrist coalitions dominated by liberals nervous of the threat of working-class socialism, as seen in the Piedmontese Canubio under Cavour. Governments after 1848 were forced into managing the public sphere and popular sphere with more effectiveness, resulting in the increased prominence of the Prussian Zentralstelle für Pressangelegenheiten Central Press Agency, established 1850, the Austrian Zensor und Polizeihofstelle, and the French Direction Générale de la Library, 1856. Nevertheless, there were a few immediate successes for some revolutionary movements, notably in the Habsburg lands. Austria and Prussia eliminated feudalism by 1850, improving the lot of the peasants. European middle classes made political and economic gains over the next 20 years. France retained universal male suffrage. Russia would later free the serfs on February 19, 1861. The Habsburgs finally had to give the Hungarians more self-determination in the Ausgleich of 1867. The revolutions inspired lasting reform in Denmark, as well as the Netherlands. Reinhard Rurup has described the 1848 revolutions as a turning point in the development of modern anti-Semitism through the development of conspiracies that presented Jews as representative both of the forces of social revolution apparently typified in Joseph Goldmark and Adolf Fischha of Vienna and of international capital, as seen in the 1848 report from Eduard von Müller Tellering, the Viennese correspondent of Marx's Neue Rheinische Zeitung, which declared, tyranny comes from money and the money belongs to the Jews. The Texas Hill Country was settled by German intellectuals fleeing the reactionary purges, German Texans. More widely, many disillusioned and persecuted revolutionaries, in particular, though not exclusively, those from Germany and the Austrian Empire, left their homelands for foreign exile in the New World or in the more liberal European nations. These emigrants were known as the 48ers. In popular culture Stephen Brust and Emma Bull's 1997 epistolary novel Freedom and Necessity is set in England in the aftermath of the revolutions of 1848. Mike Duncan's Revolutions podcast series covered the revolutions of 1848 starting with episode 7.01. 
See also Arab Spring Color Revolutions Protests of 1968 Revolutions of 1830 Revolutions of 1917-23 Revolutions of 1989 References Bibliography Surveys Brunig, Charles 1977, The Age of Revolution and Reaction, 1789-1850 ISBN 0-393-09143-0 Chastain, James, ed. 2005, Encyclopedia of Revolutions of 1848 Online from Ohio State U. Dow, Dieter, ed. Europe in 1848, Revolution and Reform, Bergen Books, 2000, Evans, R. J. W., and Hartmut Poge von Strandmann, eds. The Revolutions in Europe, 1848-1849, From Reform to Reaction, 2000, 10 Essays by Scholars Excerpt and Text Search Pauthas, Charles. The Revolutions of 1848, in J. P. T. Berry, ed. New Cambridge Modern History, The Zenith of European Power 1830-70 pp. 389-415 Online excerpts Langer, William. The Revolutions of 1848, Harper, 1971, Standard Overview Rapport, Mike, 2009, 1848, Year of Revolution ISBN 978-0-465-01436-1 Online Review, A Standard Survey Robertson, Priscilla, 1952, Revolutions of 1848, A Social History, ISBN 0-691-00756-X, despite the subtitle This is a Traditional Political Narrative Sperber, Jonathan. The European Revolutions, 1848-1851, 1994, online edition Stearns, Peter N. The Revolutions of 1848, 1974, online edition Wayland, Kurt. The Diffusion of Revolution, 1848, in Europe and Latin America. International Organization Vol. 63, No. 3, Summer, 2009, pp. 391-423 in JSTOR. France. Duvo, Georges, 1848, The Making of a Revolution, 1966. Fossil, George. The Wrong Revolution, French Republicanism in 1848. French Historical Studies Vol. 8, No. 4, Autumn, 1974, pp. 654-77 in JSTOR. Lubert, Leo. The Emergence of the Extreme Left in Lower Languedoc, 1848–1851, Social and Economic Factors in Politics. American Historical Review, 1968, v. 73 No. 4, 1019, 51 in JSTOR. Germany and Austria Deke, Istvan, The Lawful Revolution, Louis Kossuth and the Hungarians, 1848-1849 Haas, Hans J. The 1848 Revolutions in German-Speaking Europe 2001. Hewitson, Mark. The Old Forms Are Breaking Up our new Germany is rebuilding itself, constitutionalism, nationalism and the creation of a German polity during the revolutions of 1848–49." English Historical Review, October 2010, Vol. 125 Issue 516, pp. 1173–1214 online McCartney, C.A. 1848 in the Habsburg Monarchy European Studies Review, 1977, Volume 7, Issue 3, pp. 285 to 309 online. O'Boyle Lenore, The Democratic Left in Germany, 1848. Journal of Modern History, Volume 33, Number 4, Dec. 1961, pp. 374 to 83 in JSTOR. Robertson, Priscilla. Revolutions of 1848, A Social History, 1952, pp. 105-85 on Germany, pp. 187-307 on Austria Sked, Allen. The Survival of the Habsburg Empire, Rudetsky, The Imperial Army and the Class War, 1848, 1979 Vic, Brian. 
Defining Germany The 1848 Frankfurt Parliamentarians and National Identity, Harvard University Press, 2002. ISBN 978-0-674-00911-0. Italy Ginsborg, Paul. Peasants and Revolutionaries in Venice and the Veneto, 1848. Historical Journal, September 1974, Vol. 17 Issue 3, pp. 503-50 in JSTOR Ginsborg, Paul. Daniele Manon and the Venetian Revolution of 1848-49 Robertson, Priscilla 1952. Revolutions of 1848, A Social History 1952, pp. 309-401. Other. Fatesioglu, Hamiet Cesar et al. Revolutions of 1848 and the Ottoman Empire. Bulgarian Historical Review, 2009, Vol. 37 Issue 3 quarters, pp. 196-205. Historiography Danes, Ivan Zoltan. Reinterpreting a Founding Father, Kossuth Images and Their Contexts, 1848–2009 East Central Europe, April 2010, Vol. 37 Issue 1, pp. 90–117 Hamero, Theodore S. History and the German Revolution of 1848 American Historical Review Vol. 60, No. 1, October, 1954, pp. 27-44 in JSTOR Jones, Peter, 1981, The 1848 Revolutions Seminar Studies in History ISBN 0-582-06106-7 Matheson, Donald J. History as Current Events, Recent Works on the German Revolution of 1848. American Historical Review, December 1983, Vol. 88 Issue 5, pp. 1219-37 in JSTOR. Rothfels, Hans. 1848-100 Years After. Journal of Modern History, December 1948, Vol. 20 Issue 4, pp. 291-319 in JSTOR. External links The Revolutions of 1848 begin Maps of Europe showing the Revolutions of 1848-1849 at Omniatlas.com